So welcome back. Um, in this video, I'm going to run through sort of a first use, how you can use MySQL with essentially the two components that we just installed. So in the previous video, we installed MySQL Community Server, and we also installed MySQL Workbench. Now there's an important reason that we downloaded and installed two things instead of just one. And in a nutshell, what's going on is MySQL Server uh, the community server edition specifically is actually running the SQL server. Okay. And whereas MySQL Workbench is sort of like a way to access that server. So, from a practical standpoint, we'll be primarily interfacing throughout the semester using MySQL Workbench. But I want you to understand that you have to have both components there in order to really use uh, MySQL like you would expect to. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and launch MySQL Workbench. Uh, once you've done that, uh, what you can do is you can go ahead and create a new connection. Now you'll notice that I've got a handful of connections already here. Uh, you probably won't have anything. So what you want to do to create that connection is you want to go ahead and press this uh, plus button here. And essentially it asks you to name the connection. Now you can call this anything that you want. Since this is a local server, I'm gonna call it local. And since this is for the 4610 class, I'm gonna call it local 4610. Uh, you can leave the standard connection method of TCP IP. That's totally fine. The host name is gonna be 127.0.0.1. Port is gonna be 3306. That 127.0.0.1, that's your local host. So it's not going out to the internet for this. It's going to your local computer and it's looking at your installed MySQL server, okay? Uh, we don't have to worry about the username unless you set a different username than root. But what we do want to do is we want to go ahead and for password, we wanna go ahead and put that in. So I'm gonna enter in my password that I set when I installed MySQL server. Like I say, it's important that you wrote that down Go ahead and hit OK. Once you've done that, hit Test Connection. You can see I successfully made the MySQL connection. So we can go ahead and hit OK once we do that. And essentially, you'll notice that now in my list, I have that connection that I just created. So once I've done that, I'm just gonna open it by clicking on it. And that takes me to a very important screen. Now, what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to go over to schemas. Okay. And why do that? I just click on the word schemas up here. I need to create a schema. Now my SQL, unlike a lot of other SQL implementations like Microsoft SQL, um, there's of course, PostgreSQL and many other commonly used SQL implementations it calls a database a schema. So for all intents and purposes, you can think about this as we're creating a database before we do anything else. So to do that, I'm simply going to either write or control click inside of the schemas and I'm gonna hit create schema. Now, this takes me to where I can go ahead and create a new schema. I can call this anything that I want. I'm gonna call this chapter three for the time being. You can call yours something different, it's totally up to you. But all we have to do is just edit this schema name and then we hit apply down here and we hit apply again. We're just creating one simple little schema here. Once we've done that, we wanna go ahead and hit close. And it's very important that anything we're doing inside of MySQL Workbench is going into a schema. So the best way we can go about that is to set a default schema. When we set a default schema, what we are saying is every single action that we're doing is going to be applied to that particular schema. 